Elon Musk is usually far from a technological pessimist. From electric cars to Mars colonies, he's made his name by insisting that the future can get here faster. But when it comes to artificial intelligence, he sounds very different. Speaking at MIT in 2014, he called AI humanity's biggest existential threat and compared it to summoning the demon. Let's dive deep into Musk's hesitance towards advanced AI. Mind Mesh At the World Government Summit in Dubai, Musk again cued the scary organ music, evoking the plots of classic horror stories when he noted that sometimes what will happen is a scientist will get so engrossed in their work that they don't really realize the ramifications of what they're doing. He said that the way to escape human obsolescence in the end may be by having some sort of merger of biological intelligence and machine intelligence. This Vulcan mind meld could involve something called a neural lace an injectable mesh that would literally hardwire your brain to communicate directly with computers. We're already cyborgs, Musk said. Your phone and your computer are extensions of you, but the interface is through finger movements or speech, which are very slow. With a neural lace inside your skull, you would flash data from your brain wirelessly to your digital devices or to virtually unlimited computing power in the cloud. For a meaningful partial brain interface, I think we're roughly four or five years away. Musk's alarming views on the dangers of AI first went viral after he spoke at MIT in 2014, speculating that AI was probably humanity's biggest existential threat. He added that he was increasingly inclined to think there should be some national or international regulatory oversight, anathema to Silicon Valley, to make sure that we don't do something very foolish. He went on, with artificial intelligence we are summoning the demon. You know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water and he's like, yeah, he's sure he can control the demon? Doesn't work out. Some AI engineers found Musk's theatricality so absurdly amusing that they began echoing it. When they would return to the lab after a break, they'd say, okay, let's get back to work summoning. Musk wasn't laughing. Elon's crusade, as one of his friends and fellow tech big shot calls it, against unfettered AI had begun. Reiterating fears. He reiterated those fears in an interview with Recode's Kara Swisher, though with a little less apocalyptic rhetoric. As AI gets probably much smarter than humans, the relative intelligence ratio is probably similar to that between a person and a cat, maybe bigger, Musk told Swisher. I do think we need to be very careful about the advancement of AI. To many people, even many machine learning researchers, an AI that surpasses humans by as much as we surpass cats sounds like a distant dream we're still struggling to solve even simple-seeming problems with machine learning. Self-driving cars have an extremely hard time under unusual conditions because many things that come instinctively to humans, anticipating the movements of a biker, identifying a plastic bag, flapping in the wind on the road, are very difficult to teach a computer. Greater than human capabilities seem a long way away. Musk is hardly alone in sounding the alarm though. AI scientists at Oxford and at UC Berkeley, luminaries like Stephen Hawking and many of the researchers publishing groundbreaking results, agree with Musk that AI could be very dangerous. They are concerned that we're eagerly working toward deploying powerful AI systems and that we might do so under conditions that are ripe for dangerous mistakes. If we take these concerns seriously, what should we be doing? People concerned with AI risk vary enormously in the details of their approaches, but agree on one thing, we should be doing more research. Musk's perspective. From his perspective, here's what's going on. Researchers, especially at Alphabet's Google DeepMind, the AI research organization that developed AlphaGo and AlphaZero, are eagerly working toward complex and powerful AI systems. Since some people aren't convinced that AI is dangerous, they're not holding the organizations working on it to high enough standards of accountability and caution. We don't want to learn from our mistakes with AI. Max Tegmark, a physics professor at MIT, expressed many of the same sentiments in a conversation with journalist Maureen Dowd. When we got fire and messed up with it, we invented the fire extinguisher. When we got cars and messed up, we invented the seatbelt, airbag and traffic light. But with nuclear weapons and AI, we don't want to learn from our mistakes. We want to plan ahead. In fact, if AI is powerful enough, we might need to plan ahead. Nick Bostrom at Oxford made the case in his 2014 book, Superintelligence, that a badly designed AI system will be impossible to correct once deployed. Once unfriendly superintelligence exists, it would prevent us from replacing it or changing its preferences. Our fate would be sealed. In that respect, AI deployment is like a rocket launch. Everything has to be done exactly right before we hit go, as we can't rely on our ability to make even tiny corrections later. Bostrom makes the case in superintelligence 
that AI systems could rapidly develop unexpected capabilities. For example, an AI system that is as good as a human at inventing new machine learning algorithms and automating the process of machine learning work could quickly become much better than a human. That has many people in the AI field thinking that the stakes could be enormous. In a conversation with Musk and Dowd, Y Combinator's Sam Altman said, in the next few decades we are either going to head toward self-destruction or toward human descendants eventually colonizing the universe. Right, Musk concurred. In context then, Musk's AI concerns are not an out-of-character streak of technological pessimism. They stem from optimism, a belief in the exceptional transformative potential of AI. It's precisely the people who expect AI to make the biggest splash who've concluded that working to get ahead of it should be one of our urgent priorities. Shooting for the Moon Musk shoots for the moon literally. He launches cost-efficient rockets into space and hopes to eventually inhabit the red planet. In February, he announced plans to send two space tourists on a flight around the moon as early as next year. He creates sleek batteries that could lead to a world powered by cheap solar energy. He forges gleaming steel into sensuous Tesla electric cars with such elegant lines that even the nitpicking Steve Jobs would have been hard-pressed to find fault. He wants to save time as well as humanity. He dreamed up the Hyperloop, an electromagnetic bullet train in a tube which may one day whoosh travelers between LA and San Francisco at 700 miles per hour. When Musk visited Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter, he mischievously tweeted that he was at the Pentagon to talk about designing a Tony Stark-style flying metal suit. Sitting in traffic in LA in December, getting bored and frustrated, he tweeted about creating the Boring Company to dig tunnels under the city to rescue the populace from soul-destroying traffic. By January, Musk had assigned a senior SpaceX engineer to oversee the plan and had started digging his first test hole. His sometimes quixotic efforts to save the world have inspired a parody Twitter account, Bored Elon Musk, where a faux Musk spouts off wacky ideas such as Oxford Commerce as a service and bunches of bananas genetically engineered so that the bananas ripen one at a time. Of course, big dreamers have big stumbles. Some SpaceX rockets have blown up and last May a driver was slayed in a self-driving Tesla whose sensors failed to notice the tractor trailer crossing its path. An investigation by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration found that Tesla's autopilot system was not to blame. Musk is stoic about setbacks but all too conscious of nightmare scenarios. His views reflect a dictum from Atlas Shrugged. Man has the power to act as his own destroyer and that is the way he has acted through most of his history. As he's previously said, we are the first species capable of self-annihilation. Here's the nagging thought you can't escape as you drive around from glass box to glass box in Silicon Valley. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.